So picture this. You're working for long periods of time, and suddenly you feel physically exhausted without actually having done much, and then every other hour you feel the need to even it out with a cup of coffee, which in the end doesn't really seem to help much at all. Does this sound familiar? Well, a lot of fatigue and dizziness is caused by high CO2 levels in the air, and there could be other health-related problems when you're exposed to an environment with bad air quality. While high CO2 levels could be fixed by opening a window or having proper ventilation, this metric only tells a part of the story, and there is much more to know about your air quality. So let's learn air bending with Quingping Air Monitor 2. I know the name could be a little bit hard to pronounce, but this is probably one of the most feature-packed smart air monitors out there right now. It can monitor temperature, humidity, CO2 levels, particulate matter, PM2.5 and PM10, TVOC gases, and even sound levels. And as you can tell from its name, this is already the second generation model, and when compared to the first one, this has new upgraded sensors and a larger and better display, and also an added particulate matter sensor, which is now user replaceable. It is available in two colors, black and white, and it may remind you of something I have reviewed in my channel before, the NS Panel Pro, but this is actually an air monitor, and the hardware is a bit more sophisticated on this one than on a regular air monitor. There is a 4 inch IPS display with 720 by 720p resolution. It looks quite natural with no grainy details. And being smart, it even has a quad core CPU for all those on the fly calculations and even Wi Fi 6, which is interesting to see on an air monitor. And this might sound a little overkill since smart features probably won't need all this power, so I guess it's tech these days, right? And a more important part of hardware in these type of devices is the sensors which are made by Sensirion, and they are actually very high precision. Here is some look at the sensor information on the screen for those curious about what is under the hood. So the smart part hides in the box behind the display, which houses all the sensors and electronics. And there are many vent openings, like the intake line on the front, some vent lines on the bottom, and a bigger opening on the back, where the grill is magnetically detachable to access that removable PM sensor. There are likely built-in fans too, to push through the air for quicker measurements, but they are barely audible. All the measurements are displayed on a single screen, where you can touch one to put it in focus, and colored indicators will show where attention is needed. And a very useful feature is its portability, as it has a 1800 mAh battery, so you can take it on the go. It will last you around 4 hours, and while that may not seem like a lot, there is constant power draw for it to be able to refresh its readings every one second. But with a USB-C cable, you can keep it attached and make continuous measurements. And I think after seeing all the hardware, we finally understand from where the $150 price buildup comes from. And with such a large display, it has some added functionality, with a form of stylish clock for your working desk, because looking at air stats alone all day can be quite stressful, and since it has a light sensor for auto brightness, as well as the ability to store alarms, you can also put it on your nightstand. And there is a button on the top to turn off the screen completely. Besides showing the indoor air results, you can also set a location for outdoor weather information, which is obtained from the internet. There are also some on-device settings, where you can customize UI elements, change metrics, set audible alerts and calibrate sensors. Since it has Wi-Fi, there is also a companion app called Quingping Plus, from where you can see all the readings remotely, and you will see recommendations based on the measurements. Here you can also view and export historical measurement data. And if you are lucky, in some regions, I specifically tested mainland China, you will be also able to add it to Mi Home app, which can then be used together with other smart devices for seamless automations. But if storing data in cloud storage is not your thing, then there is also the so-called privacy option, which means that you can reset it and configure it to send data only to your own MQTT server, which means Home Assistant is also an option. This will need some extra tinkering and even accessing developer APIs, but I think you're already familiar with this kind of thing if you have chosen to go down this path. Parallel to this air monitor, I have already been using a Netatmo system to keep track of CO2 levels, temperature and humidity in my living room and bedroom. And in my journey I have found that setting notifications for certain measurement thresholds can be a better way to get notified rather than keeping an eye all the time on the measurements. And here's an idea what needs to be done when any of the air measurements are out of place. 
This is according to Qingping's own user guide for this device. If temperature is out of norm, then you turn on heating or cooling, and if it's the humidity, then you use a dehumidifier or a humidifier. If any of the particulate matter concentration levels are high, chances are you might need an air purifier to help filter out those fine particles, and these purifiers often have sensors of their own. And when there are high concentrations of CO2 or TVOC, then ventilation is needed. And in modern homes and offices, the ventilation systems will mostly take care of the old the fresh air exchange. But if you're in a regular office or home like me, then you will have to do this manually and open window every once in a while to make sure that fresh air comes in. This may become more problematic in the colder season, when letting in fresh air also means impacting the indoor temperature, and it may sometimes get colder before sufficient ventilation level is reached. So I think that this is a very good entry device for those willing to explore and improve their indoor air quality. Whether it's home or office, it is good to know your air, because it can help you avoid serious health conditions in the future, especially if you have children or already a developed health condition. I know the price may seem a little bit high for such a device, but it covers all the important air metrics with high precision sensors, which really justifies the price. If you decide to go this way, then you might have to invest in other supporting equipment as well, if you live in a problematic environment, because under optimal conditions, opening a window already helps a lot. Hope you enjoyed this short airbending course and if you like to see more interesting videos then hit that subscribe button and see you in the next video.